turns out that this 2009 H1N1 began circulating in pigs in 1918. Uh, at the same time, the 1918 influenza virus outbreak was occurring in humans. But because these two viruses were in different hosts, they evolved differently. So they both have a common ancestor going back to 1918. But because the swine H1N1 was in pigs, it evolved differently from human H1N1. And now that swine H1N1 is basically a new virus to humans and the pre-existing immunity we have to seasonal H1N1 doesn't pr really protect us significantly from it. Whales and seals uh, both carry uh, particular strains of influenza. Uh, horses carry influenza virus strains um, and recently dogs have become a significant re uh, uh, source of influenza virus infection. An influenza virus particle is roughly round in shape. Um, it has a couple of protrusions coming off of it in two different shapes. Um, uh, one that's more of a spike and one of more of a propeller shape. And the H spike is used to enter a cell and the other, the N spike that we always refer to, is used to actually get away from a cell. Anywhere from nine to 12 hours later, um, the surface of that cell starts to form little bubbles and those bubbles are new virus particles coming off. For about three to four hours, that cell will be able to make infectious virus particles and it can make anywhere from 10,000 to nearly a million virus particles depending on the cell type. So if you're immune to infection, with influenza that means that you have antibodies that will bind to the virus particle and keep that virus particle from interacting with the cell.